All right. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Scott. I'm Katie. Hi, Scott. I'm Wood. I'm Other Scott. We'll call him Grimsy. Forty-three and a half. Yeah. Um. I have, we do stuff on the YouTube about video games <laughs> and. Uh, Thank you. That's. It's descriptive. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That was in the notes. <laughs> um. We all. I mean, the three of us basically grow. We try to build our collection through selling and trading games and it's a there's a stigma on that especially the selling aspect because you're not supposed to ever make a profit or do anything negative in your hobby um grimsy you sell mainly on online i don't like to sell in person because haggling is uncomfortable very difficult for your bottom line and when you're a collector and you want to keep your wife from kicking you out of the house can't spend any of your money on video games. So. Why are you wearing your bag? <laughs> Just get comfortable, man. We got uh, 55 more minutes. Are you going somewhere? I'm just going to leave and come back in and uh, crash my own van. I want, I want to sort of start the whole thing off and what I always tell everyone is that there's, there's really, at least in my mind, I think there might be, there's really no right way or wrong way to collect. If you want to sell and trade stuff, go for it. If you want to shop, Mainly at flea markets or on eBay. Why let someone try to you know, tell you how to have your hobby and have, have fun with it? Um, which is why I mainly started you know, personally doing the selling and trading at the flea market because I liked talking with people, being more personal with people, and not just uh, you know, hey, I want to sell this and then get some money. But different ways, you know, like like Grimsy, you know, he maybe doesn't want to talk with the people. But it's not, no, yeah. it's it's not about not wanting to talk to people. I, I, I like to talk to people when I'm buying the games. Um, when I sell, I sell on eBay, and the reason I do that is you know exactly what's going to happen from the beginning. You're paying 13% fees, both the seller and buyer are protected, and I can do it at 4 in the morning because I work nights. So I have a very awkward sleep schedule. It's difficult for me to get out and... Is the only person I can actually talk to in America? Yeah, because we're on the same he sleep was schedule. On the other side of the world, so it's like he gets home from work when I wake up. It's perfect. It's romantic. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to go there. I personally, I personally Position. wish I could just do trades. Like if I could get every game that I ever wanted for my collection by trading somebody something, that would be great. But it's just not realistic. So I mean, picking up like me and Grimsy talk all the time, picking up like things like Pokemon that. Are so easy to you know get rid of, trade off, sell, or whatever. Everyone wants Pokemon, Mario, Zelda. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, those kind of things have really you know benefited. You try, you also try to you know be fair because I mean, we, since we are fun, we're not just people that are selling games, not just to get some money or whatever. I, I always I, I have a hard time selling for even what the first price I ask, and I normally try to ask thirty percent less than what is on eBay or whatever. What are you doing? I'm just sitting in. So we're well, well, we're doing I can blow when I, when I want to blow. <laughs> but like what? You have done your selling experience. I'm vlogging. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Has mainly been at garage sales, like which is something I've never done. And yeah, um, to actually, because I'm broke, to actually get to this country, what I done was I sold all my doubles, um, and I collected quite a few doubles. So I started having garage sales every Saturday and Sunday if I felt like waking up. And selling them for more than what I paid for them, but still quite under what I paid for them. So I didn't feel bad about selling the games, and I actually had people in the area that were collectors coming back every weekend and checking to see if my little garage sale was open. I only did like three or four times. And one guy came in and he bought almost everything, and he pretty much half himself funded the trip. And then he's like, if you want more stuff, I can trade. And he came inside, he was like looking at my collection, and that's how I got He came inside. <laughs> <laughs> that was the second and that's how I got um, um, right. linked to the past for the first time. <laughs> because it's a hard game to find in Australia. It's worth over like a hundred dollars because our prices are different. I'm ignoring these two assholes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the garage sales were good. Go away. Did you ever? Did you have any like negative experiences? Like yeah, there was definitely people that even though my prices were really cheap, like I had Final Fantasy VII for sale, complete black label for ten bucks, and where I come from, that game's like seventy dollars. I don't know why I was selling it for 10 more. <laughs> no, wait, wait, I was selling it for 20, right. He wanted to buy it for 10. I don't know why I was selling it for $20. And he refused to do the 20. He wanted to bundle it with something else and get something else for free for 20, and we were like, go back and forwards, and I'm like, dude, it's $20. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
<laughs> Eventually he leaves and he goes to his car and then he comes back immediately after and he's like, oh actually yeah, I think I will buy it because I think he went to his car and he paid the thing but oh. there were people trying to like, my prices were already five dollars and there were people trying to throw stuff together and he's like, oh can you do this any cheaper? And I was like, oh, I'm trying to get to America. It's definitely hard. <laughs> and that's what we do as buyers. And that's yeah. why I go the other road is it's very uncomfortable to be haggled and it's very comfortable to haggle. Exactly. So when you have somebody come up to you and they're offended that you're selling a game cheaper than it should be, I like to enjoy the hobby. And I think with eBay, it's so impersonal. I never speak to this, the buyer. I never have to see them, hear their story. I just get my money and buy the games I want. Basically, I go wrestling a lot, like Scott, the other Scott. And um, you'll find Mario, and you'll find Zelda, and you'll find Pokemon. And I have them all. I, I have a rule. If I don't have the game, I even have a Jonas Brothers game, I will keep every game I find, and then when I get a double, I'll trade or sell that to find the stuff, the obscure stuff, the stuff you'll never find in a grass. I sold a lot of stuff that I didn't want, so, that some, I didn't have doubles of. Some people want to go to garage sales, and some people don't want to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and, and go out. They want to have the easy option of just going on eBay and buying it, and that's totally fine. And they get mad at you for being yeah, there and like, at 6 o'clock. I'm like, get up, <laughs> if you, you know, if you get up earlier than me and you get to the sale, more power to you. And that's one thing, like, I'm, I'm always about positivity, and even if it's a 70 year old guy who I get to a grudge shop and he's buying all the games first or whatever, he has no idea, he just knows their money, he got there before me and that's what he chose to do. There's no reason for me to waste my time being pissed at somebody, you know, that just means I gotta get to the next garage show quicker. It makes the hunt more fun. Uh, but yeah, everyone has their own way they want to, you know, collect or go Can everyone wave really quickly? Well, uh, <laughs> Can everyone say subscribe to Woods Majestic Vlog? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 8-Bit Eric. Can I have a round of applause, Eric? I'll sit in the front. Eric's my hero. Thanks. Um, obviously, the way you said, however, garage sales usually have the best prices. And when people, I get you know, younger kids asking, where should I start? Where should I go? You know, to get games, I, I don't know where to go. And it's if you're trying to start, garage sales just make the most sense because one, a lot of times I come across people that don't know what they have, uh, and they're just wanting to get rid of it. They're not trying to necessarily, you know, sell it to be, you know, fund a vacation, a trip to America. They just had it in their garage, so. Um, but being able to use that as sort of like the starting point, and hey, I want to just begin collecting. I want to you know start with. I want to spend a couple of dollars. There's really no other place left now to do that. I mean, even at swap meets, unfortunately, um, it, it's hard to find those prices that low. So definitely. And you can ride your bike. And you can ride. I have a friend that rides his bike around town, and he finds amazing shit, and he spends no gas money, and he gets exercise. It's very good. Can you give us some advice on how you can? thrive in a very, very difficult garage selling uh, scene because it's very competitive. Um, <laughs> living in a really populated area helps. Um, if you live in the sticks, you're not going to probably find too much. Less competition out there though. Yeah, there is less competition. So that would be an aspect of more trying to contact through like Craigslist and stuff. So you actually maybe have a destination to get to for sure. You go from like 7 a.m. until like 4 p.m. as well. Yeah, I spend... I, I invest the time, you know, if, if you go out for two hours and you go to 20 garage sale, it's all, it's all a numbers game. And most of the stuff that we've both got has been through actually asking, do you have stuff? Oh yeah, nothing is ever. Nothing's ever at the actual garage sale, there's like teapots at the garage sale. Yeah. But in the house is where you find the stuff, so you have to ask. Yeah, it's, it just seems to be, uh, oh we didn't even think that anyone would want this stuff. I mean, and most of the things I've ever found, I don't know if it's the same guys, that have been amazing lots, have been right near my house. And it's sort of like that car crash uh, percentage kind of thing where it's like, oh, if you, worst accidents are going to happen five you know, minutes away from the house, the best garage sale finds for me have been right down the street, down the block. I agree. No, and, and the other thing he was saying is, I think the great Billy Hudson has said this before, you always ask, a lot of people don't realize that people want to buy video games. They're sitting in their garage or their attic in this box and they think they're junk. A lot of times I've said, hey, do you have any video games? And they look at me like I'm a fool. And you want those, and they'll bring a huge box out and go, 10 bucks, and it's a system, 20 games. So, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Always ask. And then one thing that I have the advantage of at least sometimes is 
Katie uh, will sometimes go garage selling with me, and if it's like a really busy weekend, we will split up, and if there's multiple community sales. Like I'll across s- town, there's like a huge community sale, then he'll stay local where he finds all the good stuff, and then I get to go. <laughs> 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 uh, the so community sale is way out. Same Castle. Yeah, send her off on the uh, exploratory mission. Um, we, let's see, I have my notes, so give me a second. Uh, different places to sell, like we were talking about earlier. Um, if you are trying, you know, wanting to kind of get in the aspect of the selling portion uh, or trading, there are more places than ever to do that. I mean, online, you got obviously your you know, eBay's and your Amazon, stuff like that. Facebook but groups. Facebook groups, um, collector groups, especially, no one's going to be, well, you're overseas. I get a message all the time, like, well, there's no flea markets in my area, there's nothing like that. And being able to just go online, there's so many Facebook groups now uh, in your local areas that do trading and <coughs> collecting. Uh, it's definitely one of the must kind of places to do that. Um, and then there's some fan sites like Nintendo Age. Uh, to jump on, there's pretty much a fan site for almost every uh, category or um, system. So I mean, I really need to get on that myself better and go on like Turbo because I'm not finding any Turbo games. Yeah. You need to get a Facebook page. I don't need a Facebook page. He doesn't have Facebook. Page. <laughs> he doesn't have I have a fan page. Yeah. So you work his fan page. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if that's a whole other subject to go into, but I like having a little bit of a separation between you know the constant video game collecting, trading, always talking about it, and then having that little bit of an area where I don't have to deal with it. <laughs> Um, interesting experiences we've had at garage sales, like one story or something. Would you rather hear my interesting garage sale experience or my interesting airplane experience that just happened on my way here? Tell my story about New Orleans. <laughs> you need your own story, it wasn't about it. Well, we'll do the uh, airplane. My airplane story? Okay. Scott, okay. I haven't heard that yet. No. So, it was a, a pretty small plane. It should have been a turbo prop. It was so small. But I was sitting in the very, very last seat, and uh, I was kind of crammed. It was a single seat. It was so small. It was right next to the bathroom. So I got all the fun activities. <laughs> and uh, a little person went into the bathroom, and I'll spare you some of the details, but she was unable to get up onto the toilet. And she really had to go, so she dropped trouser and she went. And then uh, she opened the door and proceeded to exit the bathroom, and it looked like a Mardi Gras party in that <laughs> full year in New Orleans. And the bad part was the poor stewardess comes back just to do a final check and make sure everything's seated and belted in, and she opens the door. And uh, she said a four-letter word. <laughs> I, I don't think they're supposed to do that, but I don't think she cared because she knew she was the one who'd be cleaning it. So um, I had a front row seat for this. And again, there are some younger people here, so imagine there were much more graphic things I could have shared with you, but I had a very fun flight. So. A proof story. Really? I tried. That's what we got. Okay. Well, I'll <laughs> tell you the, the R-rated version later. Okay. Much right. worse. Let's really? hear about Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras? Okay. <clears throat> So I was in New Orleans for a day, and we go to Hot Topic. <laughs> and there's this 19 year old blonde witch, apparently she's a witch. She told us she's a witch. She's no good at potions though. She's no good at, she's tried potions, they didn't work out for it. Completely true. <laughs> I asked her if she wanted to come out to Bourbon Street, which she said yes. And we met her at the front of Hustlers, where you two spent a good night. I, I don't know how much I can say here, but there's about seven hickeys on my body, and five of them are on my neck. <laughs> yeah. Basically, his, his first trip to, to Bourbon Street was successful. It was successful. Yeah. She read my tarot. Is it tarot? Is that how you read it? Yeah, in the hotel room. We'll, we'll take it back to gaming now. <laughs> <laughs> I like New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's not. He doesn't want me to go back through on all these yeah, on the way home. Trying to be like the, the dad way. in the situation. Yeah. Trying not yeah. to take that. <laughs> <Anyway. laughs> um, I haven't even mentioned anything about necessarily on YouTube. Obviously, I do a show called Video Game Sellers at a flea market with a bunch of very interesting people. Um, very interesting. <laughs> 
Katie uh, gets to sort of be there with me and sit back seats and have to be a part of it all. Um, I get to see all the parts that aren't on the show. There's a lot. They're just as interesting. Yeah, they can't make it on there. <laughs> um, yeah. We like a, we have a lot of the word gank came about on the show, and it's basically when anyone thinks that they're getting ripped off, but all the sellers, that's all they ever try to do each other, to each other, basically. So there's millions and millions of people constantly, you know, that they're always, uh, wait, no, you, you screwed me in five bucks with that, and then I want to uh, sell it back to you, and then they just trade the same games back and forth, which I try to get that stuff on camera. <laughs> um, let's see. Back to the notes. Didn't you have an exciting, crazy gradual experience you were going to share? Oh, yeah, well, your guys' stories. Well, well, yeah, we were hoping you would be the The, <laughs> the forefront there? Yeah. Um, some of my, my crazy, like I was saying before, my best finds have always been really close to my house and, and nearby. Uh, probably one of the craziest days I ever had was waking up at, uh, it was during our winter, which was like March, and it's 58 degrees. Um, but uh, going down the street and in one, the first sale was just a guy I went to high school with and I had talked to him since then and he was like, yeah, get rid of all my old games and he had two top loaders and 80 games or so uh, and he wanted like, it was a dollar a piece for the games and three dollars for the system or whatever. And then I, I thought, you know, this can't get any better than every single garage sale that day was just like Super Nintendo bundle, Super Nintendo bundle. And uh, I specifically got a message on that video from someone saying, if you didn't buy all the goddamn Super Nintendo bundles, I could have gotten one of them myself. <laughs> and then I actually met, met, met up with that guy at the flea market and sold it to him for like 10 bucks. But what I paid for it, was I was like, you just gotta get up earlier. So it's all about being nice and trying to be fair. That wasn't a good thing to do. No. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, with, with the selling experience, I mean, trying to be as <coughs> fair and as honest as you can with people, and it, it definitely is a good thing to have knowledge on the product as well, or whatever you're you know, selling. It doesn't have to be just games. But I mean, being able to talk about it, and if you enjoy it, like, I know a lot of people don't want to go to reseller booths because it's normally a older guy or somebody that should, they can't have a conversation about. It's very design. cold. It's, it's all about business. I think what he's saying is good. It may not benefit the seller today to be a decent person, but it'll benefit them tomorrow because then they'll keep coming back. I know he has a lot of regular customers who specifically go to him to find something. They're his first option. And it's... It's definitely, like, I enjoy talking about it, or I'm at a flea market, I expect people to, to go, well, I, I want it cheaper. In fact, when they don't, I stop them, and they're walking away, I'm like, why don't you offer me less, you know? There's really no reason. So, I mean, if, if you were looking to get into, you know, setting up a booth, because a lot of flea markets, some people will ask, you know, how much does it cost to set up a booth at the market? Mine's 10 bucks a day. Like, you can literally, like, make that back in five seconds. Um, so, I mean, it, it's, it's a good place to start, if anything, just to try it out uh, and see if there's people in your area. Some markets don't have any gaming booths, or they have one, that one gaming booth that no one wants to go to. Because they have the same stuff. His idea would work on garage sale, and that's another good thing where you'll meet a lot less intense people. You know, a lot of people that come to flea markets are really intense collectors, and they'll scrutinize a label or... Yeah. Now I'm going to open it up to you guys to have any subjects that you would like to talk about. You telling me this now? Ladies first. And he's told me told nothing. Story from New Orleans. And he's told me nothing about this panel. I was sat on the toilet this morning in the hotel room, but I did. <laughs> do you just want to do a Q and A today? <laughs> we didn't know if we were going to have anyone show up. It's, it's early. You guys all feel the heat right now. Yes, thank you. I really appreciate it. You okay. go first because I'm completely caught off guard here. Who wants to hear about dingoes and kangaroos? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I've got. You do? Pick one. <laughs> you work in a zoo, Katie, can you take this? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about Joey's, mate. You know, I don't actually take care of I just wallabies. And <laughs> the, Katie, the, actually, we can throw this story into your zoo. Yeah. You work at the zoo. I work at the zoo. That's where she met him. Yeah. And the male wallaby is extremely terrible <laughs> and hates my guts. So I have to use a shovel every time I go in there to keep them from <laughs> ripping me a new one. 
She, uh... Um, he's like a third of my size. Well, he's, he's scary. He gets this, he doesn't lose eye contact the entire time he's with you. Like, I go in there and he just locks on and then it's, he's biting the shovel and he's just ripping it apart and he just wants to see me flying bleeding on the ground. I know. He, she's actually, That's my wallaby story. She's actually uh, been a good promoter, connect, I don't know what the right word to use, but at uh, the zoo and at the clinic she works at, people will ask, hey, what do you do, you know, what do you got to do for fun? I'm like, oh, we go to a flea market and sell video games and trades and play games and whatever. And they're like, what? Can you get me a Dreamcast? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been a good way, like, you know, sure. through her and through her work to, to get things. And also people, you know, hey, I have a PS3 that's not working anymore, you know, do you want it? Yes. Yes, I do. So having having uh, someone that's interested, she plays honestly. She plays more games than I do because I don't have. She plays more games than I do. Yeah. She's. She Somebody plays. was like, "Well, do you collect games?" And I'm like, "I do." He the collects work. the games. I get to play them all. <laughs> but he's out there every Saturday collecting all the games, getting everything that I can play later. <laughs> so he does all the work, and you have all the fun. And I have all the fun. Exactly. Most of the time I play games now, just when I'm on tour on a handheld. And then it get me a game collecting Gilfred. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone here, that's the If you take away anything from yeah. this, just get someone to help you collect your games. Yeah. Okay. So then you can beat me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you just have all the games you could ever want to play. I think one thing I would say is advice. It's not necessarily a buying or selling thing, so I'll be taboo and kind of stream off topic. But the most important advice I could give any collector or potential collector is. Don't let meatheads like us influence your decision making on what to buy too much. Buy what you enjoy. Exactly. Remember that this is a hobby. Don't spend $500 on Little Samson. Let stupid people like me do that. <laughs> so, some people. Um, I wouldn't even do that. You know, when, when they're trying to start collecting or they, and they have a smaller collection, they, it, it, I always say, you know, collect with what you want to actually play. I mean, you don't. Some people want to be a completist collector if that's what you want to do and buy everything. But if and that's what's fun to them yeah. is having knowing that you own that, <coughs> then that's why they do it. But pace yourself in budget. Yeah. Don't not pay your mortgage because you wanted that minty, fresh, complete box game that you'll probably never play. Yeah, there's there's a, a reason why you know there are fun games that are priced at five or ten dollars. You know, and there are fun games priced at 500 When I was younger and you're more <laughs> naive, I used to buy everything like that, no matter what the price. I remember one week in particular when I was probably about 20, I think when Skyward Sword came out. When did Skyward Sword come out? In your land? In my land. In my <laughs> last month in my land. We're catching up. Anyway, I spent the very last... I had, I had $130 and the game was 100 because I live in Australia. And I didn't have the motion plus sensor to play it, so I had to spend the extra 30 bucks to get a motion sensor plus, and I didn't eat for a week and a half. <laughs> but I played a lot of Skyward Sword. Don't do that, budget properly. And uh, trying to, especially for retro stuff, trying to find the value of what something is between the different places that you, you can sell them or look up to sell them, or uh, on pricecharting.com now, stuff like that, it, it can be a challenge to find what the price is or something, and I personally use completed listings on eBay, sold items where I can see a picture. That way I can at least tell someone, hey, the same condition, same completeness, everything is in that photo, and there's 10 of them that have sold for around that, I'll do 30% less than that. Is this auction or is this buy it now? Um, I know some people go, I personally will kind of go off of both, like the median between the two. I don't, I'm not just looking at buy it now, I'm not just looking at auction, because the price can vary so much. Some auctions can get very crazy if two bidders emotionally invest. When you see something on eBay and you bid on it, you feel like it's already yours. And you almost get angry when somebody else, how dare they bid on this item. And you'll find yourself emotionally bidding. So the smart thing to do is set a price in your head, wait till there's five seconds left, or use a cheating program if you want to be cheap, and then submit your bid. And if you win, you win. If you lose, you lose. Don't get emotional. Pricesharing.com, I've, I've had issues, especially with dealing with trying to buy stuff from somebody because it uses Amazon and eBay in different places. Um, and sometimes the listings, especially from eBay, can have more than one item in it, but maybe the title just said Little Samson, 
and then that's what the price is being based off of. So that's personally why I haven't used too much of price charting because it, it can have too many variant, you know, variables to it. Some of the flaws and inconsistencies with that website is if, for example, a little Samson sealed sells for five thousand dollars and it was a troll bid and no one really paid, it still registers that data in the the sum of the price. Yeah. So what he was saying is basically. It's not confirmed information. They're just trusting that whatever happened on eBay was official and it was all straight and narrow. There was no shenanigans like that Nintendo World Championship that sold for 100000 It affected the price of what that website thinks it's worth now. And it also fooled a lot of people into thinking, oh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, hailing from the dark side of the moon. Are you done, are you done really? growing up now? From between two beds. Yes, from his rap. I've heard out. I've heard out. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. He slept on the floor last night and threw up this morning. You're only half an hour late. That's not bad. I was going to say that Australia, not that it is relevant to any of you guys, doesn't have any sort of price listings on games like a site you can go to. And you don't have internet there. You don't even have electricity. <laughs> but you have dial up. Okay. okay. And that's why our prices get so ridiculously high is because people can charge whatever they want and there's no actual listing to say this is what the price is. Because maybe they actually sold it for $200. Yeah. And they do. They can put whatever price on they want and they will sell. So but just buy here system. for thousands of dollars so you can buy the games for $5. It's the smartest plan. I have so many NES games that I don't think I'm going to fit them in my suitcase at this point. They're like $2 each. Yeah. Like $20 or I'm from in Australia. Did you see Billy's $2 games? Yeah, I bought Billy a bunch McDonald of them. Billy McDonald has tubs of $2 games, guys. About Go buy them. 1,000 games are using the first table. Off to the left. Off to the left when you walk in, there's tubs and tubs. Yep. Two bucks, Billy. Two <laughs> bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is a little Samson in there. It's totally It's weird. hidden. I think it's a good time to troll you. Out for I oh, wait. Yeah, I know. I knew you would. Katie, yeah? I was just remembering how you were talking about... Um, Use the microphone, it's louder. Yeah. It sounds cool. I was just thinking about how you are talking about having a... Like, if you want to have a, a market, or a booth at a market, is to actually keep your stock up to date. Because people will come to the market and they'll be like, Oh, don't go to that guy. He has the same stuff every day. So you lose your your customers if you don't actually go out and get... And at least know, change places. Stock, you know, or yeah. yeah like, but also, if you work in the sun, if you work in the sun, sell the games before they fade at least. Yeah, don't leave them up for a Switch them up, you know. Put the ones in the sun in the back. <laughs> or just buy a tent for twenty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Let's ask them questions. We should ask them questions. This is the Q and A portion. Do we have a microphone for that? Uh, I think it's great. Yeah. No, we can expand here if they have a microphone. Anybody has a question, raise your hand and we'll randomly pick it. It can literally be about anything. You, yeah, it you, you, you don't want to ask a question. Um, you know that the, 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 the other console specific sites are like Jaguar 64 and Say 16? Mm -hmm. I like both. Both are um, awesome. I think what he's saying is if you're a specific type of collector to a specific system, there does exist specific Facebook groups for just Jaguar fans or just TurboGrafx fans, and if you're into that, it's very beneficial to go there because almost everything is going to be stuff you're interested in, and it's a great way to meet fellow collectors, and with and things like Jaguar, they're so rare, you need yeah. friends to help you find games. And they're probably most likely wanting what you have, you know, as doubles or extra or whatever, and almost all the experience I've had with that is they never ask prices compared to eBay or Amazon. They're always, because they know that you're that they're on there, that site, they want to build up the, the community and the fan base of their area or on their website, so they'll definitely take the time and give you a good deal. Collectors will always help fellow collectors because they see your passion. If they think you're buying it just to flip or to make a quick buck, you're not going to get that discount. And talking to even resellers who I know everybody thinks they're so evil, and getting to know them and treating them like people, you'll get a better deal right away. I mean, I know somebody just picked up a Contra because he took a few minutes to talk to the guy that he wouldn't have gotten if he just walked up and made a flat offer. How much was it? How much was it? Uh, it was $5 for Contra 3 for Super Nintendo. <laughs> it happened here just recently. While we were sleeping. Yeah. Questions? Next question. Ask us questions. It can be about anything. It doesn't have to be about selling. Yes, sir. Is, is Aaron a real person? Yeah, and actually, Woo! that's a good Woo! subject. Woo! Woo! <laughs> I know it can seem at times that the people on the show are, are, acting. are acting or being a certain way, but that they, just, they can all attest. They both been at the market. 
They are completely. Has anyone seen his like rap videos and his songs? Have you seen what's that song called? Morals here, and she's looking really cute. She's a fourth member of the Game Wizard crew. What's that song called? Everyone go check out Aaron's channel. Everybody needs to check out Aaron's channel. Um, and he has he has a mixture of videos on his channel, from old rap and music, and uh, it's Aaron Kosharski. Give you a plug, everybody. So everyone go check out Aaron's channel and subscribe. But yeah, I mean, everyone at the market is exactly how they are. Josh is incredibly giggly and shy. Red and sweaty. All the time. Crazy K is is pretty certifiably crazy. Um, so yeah, it, it was never like a hey, do something funny on camera. I just turned the camera on and they just they're they just yeah. We left out. <laughs> yeah. On the day that I spent there, that they're, they're real people. <laughs> Jabroni's signing me a pony shirt that he wants me to wear. He's like, are you gonna wear it? Are you, are you gonna wear it? That's happening. He's like, I'm leaving. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, for actually for all of you. Well, he, oh. his hand went up first. No, yeah. I can't see. Shh. Okay. They can't see past you. It's fine. This could be for anybody. Have any of you guys ever been ripped off in an online trade? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, mine was a Xbox development kit. Um, and it was, I won't say the person's name, but they are a well-known con artist now, yeah. apparently on, in our community, on websites and stuff, um, and he bought it, and I did a video explaining, you know, this is, like I always try to do, I want to make sure everyone knows every aspect of what they're getting, so I'm like, here's, here's what it does, blah, 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 um, and I don't pretend I knew what it, you know, everything this development kit does, I don't develop video games, so, uh, he purchased it, mailed it off, he got it, and it wouldn't play every single Xbox game he had. And I, I was like, okay, that might make sense because it's not a, you know, a normal system. So he said he wanted to return it. I said, all right, uh, you can you know, get your money back, you just need to send it back first because you did it through PayPal. And he said no, and uh, he opened up a case on, on PayPal thinking, I guess, that they were just going to give him his money back and he gets to keep the system. PayPal said, no, you need to send the product back. So. Uh, two weeks later, or actually it was because people gives like a defined time of when he has to get back. He waited to the last moment and it was a box of textbooks that I received at my door. And uh, he was... He already got his money back. No, no, no. No, no, no. He did not get his money back yet from people. Um, he was smart enough though to leave his name in the textbook. <laughs> so, <laughs> When I went to the police and filled out a police report, because that's what PayPal wants you to do in that situation, they just laughed and basically said, okay, here's your report, and sent it to PayPal, and he did not get his money back. But he then tried selling that uh, death kit multiple times on fan sites like Nintendo Age. And, um, so that was my sh that was like one shitty experience from doing it. Like, I've done between probably like five and 600 trades and transactions with people or sending out prizes, like in the, in the pickup videos like that. I've never had anything like that. Very minimal. Did you guys have any hardware issues? I don't buy online. You don't buy online? I don't buy online. They don't have a mail system in <laughs> <laughs> There's like one kangaroo that does the whole country. <laughs> 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 My dad sent me birthday money. Paul Hogan? <laughs> what? What was that gen generic Australian abuse? <laughs> Is the postmaster general Paul Hogan? No. <laughs> he retired. I believe uh, Eric had a question. Okay, for all you users, like Billy J. Fallon and the Sons of Samson, what is your guys' like, career plan out in the wild? Like, and how did you react when you found that? And, like, I'll let you guys come and get to the I, I have like a guy that gives me all my rare finds. <laughs> his name's Tyler, and I bought his entire collection. <laughs> Drives over to his house and basically says, Here, I paid 100 bucks to be. And then so like, yeah, sure, like, I bought Sculptor's Cup from him for 40 bucks. I got Trip World from... Yeah, you got the Trip World from him for 40 or 50. 40, yeah, mm. really rare power game. And I got Second Attack in a box for $25. So Stuff like that. That's just cheating, that's not fair. I got actually 52 for 50. In the sense of me actually finding stuff, like in the wild, uh, Mighty Final Fight for five bucks was pretty awesome. And at the time, I when I got it, I wasn't even like super excited on the video because I was like, I, I thought it was still on the fifty dollar mark. I'm like, that's still a great find, but whatever. And then didn't realize it almost double that. Um, 
a Beast Wars Transmetal in the box and a, and a N64 bundle for a dollar. Um, I found a um, Super Metroid, which in my country is worth about a hundred bucks. I found two actually. One was in an old furniture shop for six bucks, and one was in that. If anyone's seen my YouTube channel, like convention, right? In the toy convention, yeah, in the box, which probably worked out to about five bucks itself. For me, it's not so much uh, have been single games, like one game worth about. It's been bundles and lots, like thirty bucks for a bundle where you know everything breaks down to thirty cents a piece or something like that, and there's like a Conker's Bat for a day and Super Metroid and. Many, many, many really high value games, whatever. So it's, it's more of a quantity, which is always good. Do you know that that stuff's in the bundle when you buy it? In that case, I didn't. Most of the time, you know, it, it's one of those, I'm sure everyone can attest. Yeah, like, if you open something up and someone says 30 bucks and you can see on the top, like, one thing that's worth it, you're just like, fuck, yep, all right, <laughs> I don't want to risk, you know, them going and digging through and they're like, oh, I forgot about that in there. Darn it. And that was the first cuss in the entire thing. Oh, I did? Oh. You did. Uh, so, <laughs> my story is actually a story of karma, and it happened in a retail store. Um, on my way to the Midwest Gaming Classic, I unfortunately witnessed a gentleman trading in his entire NES collection, which was probably 250 games. And I'm not the type of person that's going to like try to middleman the store, so I didn't try anything. But I asked him after he sold it what he got for it, and he sold 250, 250 games for $180. Oh. And the store wouldn't even let me look at them until the deal was over. And when it was done, I was looking through. And there was a DuckTales 2 with manual in there. And uh, the guy was flustered from trying to put price stickers on his newly acquired games. And I said, uh, how much for DuckTales here? And I picked it up and showed it to him. He must have thought I said DuckTales 1 because he said five bucks. So I pulled that five out like a Texas <laughs> West shooter, put it on the counter, put the game in my car, and locked the door. Um, yeah, it was very, very good. There's, you know... There's always that thing in, you know, in the back of your mind of like, at least for me, you know, if I know the value of something that's you know really rare and someone just like you know five bucks, especially if it's a situation like that where you technically should have known, you know, do you do you, do you feel like you want to tell them or do you you know just buy? It? <laughs> I like five dollar Ducktail twos. Yeah. I don't like one hundred fifty seven dollars ninety nine cent Ducktail twos. I, I feel personally as long as you haven't done anything to make them think that they what they have is not you know good. If they ask, you know, if you straight up say, you know, oh no, that's all junk, you know, or whatever, it can be hard. There can be that middle, especially at garage sale, because like I said, they're looking to get rid of things. I've had people ask, you know, is anything rare here? Is anything good? And I, I'll try to be, you know, but I'll point out. I've pointed out like the Smash Bros. Yeah, that's a good one, obviously, you know, something. But then I'm like, I am at a garage sale, so I'm not looking to pay, you know, that that price. And most of the time it works. I've never really had anyone go, oh uh, yeah, well actually, one time I've had now the Digimon pinball table. Oh, okay. The woman like wanted ten bucks and then looked Dude. on eBay and was like, I want more than this now. I'm not selling it. <laughs> you were standing there for so long. I was sat in that car. Florida is hot. I'm it's from, not hot. It's I'm from Australia. This is Texas. <laughs> Land of the heat. Hot. Florida almost killed me. <laughs> and I'm sat in that car and you're like trying to like figure out the ten dollars. The air conditioning. No, the car wasn't on. <laughs> anyway. Any other questions? How long have you been uh, collecting? Um, I still have games in my collection since I was three. Uh, I have a hoarder mentality. <laughs> Can't get rid of it, but I'm an organized hoarder, so. Our house is attested to that. It's a Tetris, you know, game in my game room. He has a room that you can barely open the door. <laughs> when you open it, it's like everything brushes the door. And there is so much stuff in there, but it's so neat. Yeah. But you can't walk into the room. I spray it for bugs and silverfish, you know, it's all until we get a bigger house, but I mean. Dang, those silverfish. Destroyers of foxes. Silverfish. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I still have my original action set in the box when I was three that my mom kept in her closet um, forever. And there's very few games I've ever gotten rid of. I mean, it's, it's been more like, we try, I think when I first met her, I traded her in 64 for an Xbox. And that was like one of the last times I've ever traded any, any games. I traded all my old consoles in for the next one from SNES to 64 to GameCube. And I didn't start collecting until I got a 360. I even sold my Wii to get a 360. 
And then at 360, it was like, that's it, I want everything back. His, his ending was kind of my beginning, how he said I want everything back. I've always been an avid collector of video games, but it was always what I wanted then. So I would buy all the Genesis games I wanted, and then a Super Nintendo game would come out I had to get, so I would trade absolutely everything I had for the new Super Nintendo and the one game. Build that library up. Mm. Repeat, repeat, repeat. But with me collecting, I think, is my biggest regret was I had a car breakdown on me, and at the time I had every single PlayStation 1 RPG, all of them. And I needed the money, so I sold them and bought a new car. And it haunted me so bad because that was before collecting was cool. And I literally hunted them down for probably like four years. It took me to get them all. And that regret kind of motivated me to start trying to get everything. So I think for me, there's, there's two completely different things. There's playing the games, and then there's collecting and holding physical items. And every once in a while, I'll get in like an argument with, you know, why don't you just emulate them? Why do you have to, you know, collect them? Whatever? It's, it's, if you have a collector's mentality and you like to, I love taking them out of the boxes and looking at them, reading the manuals and then physically touching them, um, which is, shut <laughs> 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 um, He'll get in his room and he'll open up a box. Or I'll forget, you know, like, you can't forget maybe you had a certain thing. And, and it's not that intense. <laughs> That's kind of a two-parter. One for Grimsey. How often do you run into box saves in the series? He was in the hotel room last night bragging about how many little Samsons he's got. One, and then there was this one that just, that just came out of the sky, and then this one was in my bathtub one day. <laughs> <laughs> Let the record show. Yeah, that was a Samson. Yeah, that's a Samson. That I found one box Samson that I was not pleased with, so I found another, and Instead of going on eBay or whatever, uh, Billy got the cartridge and Jay got the box and the manual. So if I ever find a game that a friend of mine or somebody I know is really looking for, like Persona 2, if I ever find one of those and somebody really needs it, we win! <laughs> Next level! Uh, you know, it's it's the, the whole, I will take care of my friends. and. I saw that, that is very, very helpful, but to answer your question, only two ever, but I've had four copies of the game. Just hold. Um, and then your second part of the question was favorite genre. Yeah. Uh, for me, horror, I mean, I'm almost always very scary. Uh, he had this hat specifically made to say Silent Hill. Because there, all, there was no cool Silent Hill. I have to need that word satisfactory. I've been with this guy for a week now, like living with him, and I haven't seen that hat come off of his head. At one point, three days in, he said, this hat smells. <laughs> <laughs> and he's still wearing it. <laughs> you I watched, it, you watched it in the sink sometimes. All right, sure. <laughs> Mr. Wood? No, no, let's do Katie, and I'm going to say it's RPGs, Final Fantasy XI. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm obvious. Actually, I'm like really involved in 14 right now, which is no surprise. But any, or like the Final Fantasy, everything. Final Fantasy XII was probably one of my favorite games. I, I just, I could never quite, I played eleven for a decent amount of time, but I can't invest like MMO hours into something. I, I like to sample a lot of different things. I play in the morning. Don't want to interrupt. And, uh, <laughs> just 13 hours, I think was my record. Sad. <laughs> what, what's your favorite genre of video games? I get so close to this microphone. I feel like really intimate. Actually, it's not beat em ups. <laughs> That's the reaction. Cool. Name, in case you don't know, his channel's name is. I was expecting a bigger reaction than that. <gasps> no, action adventure um, is really broad and generic, but I love going on an adventure when I play a game. Like the feeling of playing a Zelda. Yes. The feeling of going and being a freaking badass dude is what I love the most. My, 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 if I had to pick two more, it would be Schmups in RPG, though. And if there was a horror schmuck RPG, that would be perfect. Uh, Sweet Home? There's two of them. That, it is two, which is missing a I've never played a triple one. For me, it would have to be RPGs, and the reason I say that is I've got terrible ADHD. It's hard for me to do one thing at a time, so I can't really read a book and put myself there. I can comprehend the words, but I can't imagine myself in the situation. With an RPG and the visual stimuli that goes with it, it allows me to leave my crazy mind and kind of go into that world. And, you know, that's a really cool experience. And I think that, like Katie was talking about Final Fantasy, some of those border on artwork. I mean, if you think of the music that's in those and how it affects you or 
the art design. I mean, there's just so much to an RPG. I just think that they put so much more work into those than a beat em up or an action adventure game. It's not the, counting Zelda. Zelda's yeah, are masterpieces. Action adventure can be, can be that. Stuff. Speaking of artwork, though, I also really, really enjoy hand drawn point and clicks, like puzzling ones, like Whispered World and Deponia and the Monkey Island series and that kind of stuff. They make you think. And yeah, and they're beautiful fun. and they're great to look at. So that's just like every every new area you go into is like another beautifully drawn picture or painting. Any other questions? Please. We've got about twelve minutes left. Melbourne. Melbourne. I got a question. Um, I know Jay specifically is always, I guess, reminiscing and saying, "Why didn't I pick up that game a couple of years back for that price? Because now it's ten times." You know, yeah. I don't have it. So I was wondering what you guys' biggest regrets that you came across and didn't pick up. On like the second time I went out hunting, I saw Majora's Mask for $25, and back then it was probably like a $25 game, so I didn't want to pick it up. And then like six months later, I saw it for 50 and at that point it was about a $50 game, and I still didn't pick it up. And now it's sitting around the 90 and it's just, I've been seeing them selling for over 100 bucks now in the power region. And I think back to that $30 Majora's Mask and how quickly I would buy that right now. Will ours work on your goofy Nintendos over there? I actually bought uh, the holog we didn't get the holographic one, and I bought that from Scott, and that's like one of the first things I bought. I think that was the first game I bought. For $15? For $15. So yes, and I have a 64 that I can play it on. Okay, perfect. Um, Gonna go out of order, back this way? Okay, uh, my regret actually, he could mock me on it because he has the game. Uh, when I was, uh, I don't know, maybe 16, 17, maybe a little older, um, I had a blockbuster near me that I would go to all the time and purchase used games because they would bargain bin them cheap. And I remember going in there and moving past three wheat box clay fighter sculptor cuts. Oh, I have that. Four ninety nine, <laughs> and I picking up like the dumbest, stupid sports title that I probably played once, and thinking like, why would I buy sculptor's cut? Why would I buy this? Oh, and there was also a box, complete box Mega NX three there for five dollars that I didn't buy. What? Oh, there's some how much was yours? One of the few I don't have. Five bucks? Well, I'm not gonna say what mine was then. <laughs> um, I buy so much shit. Dude, there's so much hair on this table right now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it for the for Pat. Pat. Pat needs it. I'm <laughs> here with less than 12 inches of hair, so. <laughs> I, I, maybe it's it's not the best you know thing to do, but I. I almost buy every collection. I'm such a collector's edition whore. Like, so there's a few things that are passed on. Um, but it would have probably been back, like, it was more of the sense of, like, back in, like, the Sega Saturn, Sega CD days, and certain ones that are true to be that I didn't pick up at that time where I had to pick up, like, a few years later um, to pay instead of 20 or 30 bucks used, like, 50 or 60 bucks used. But I tend to buy way too much of stuff. Katie, the I don't have to buy games because my awesome husband does it for me. Any regrets? First, first present she ever got me was Final Fantasy X. That was the first game she ever bought me for Christmas. Yeah. Is that a cool wife or what? Yeah. Mine buys me like socks and shirts, <laughs> books on how to quit collecting video games. <laughs> I'm 23. I'm not married, and I have no intention to be for a long time. Yeah, and it, it's witches. sweet. I gotta get more witches. New Orleans awaits. <laughs> Question. Actually, two of them. Let me go ahead and flip a journal. Are there any purchases you've made that you completely regretted? And as someone who comes from the old, old, old school, what are the oldest consoles that you have? Uh, I'll start. The oldest console I have, like, I pretty much collect Nintendo and, and on up. I did, like, my brothers had an Atari when I was well, little. Atari's not Everybody's had an Atari. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that was actually the first console I ever played on was an Atari uh, 2600, but for me, like gaming started for myself with the original Nintendo, so that's technically the oldest stuff I really sort of focus on. Um, purchase that I would have regretted. I bought, uh, I got really excited about a big lot of systems or, or something like that at a garage sale, and you know, spent maybe 10 bucks a piece, nothing bad, but every one of them was broken. Um, so it's like 50 bucks in, and now the best I can do is maybe try to buy more stuff to repair them or replace 10 readers or whatever, so. That would probably be mine. Uh, okay, so his story was very similar to mine. Um, I'm of age where my first system was a Sega Master System. Uh, so that's for all the Sega fanboys out there. Um, 
and I had an S, so that's where I start. And believe it or not, I actually got my first Atari cartridge this weekend. I had Jay just give me one because my mother needs it for a scavenger hunt at work. So I literally own nothing older than Nintendo era, um, except the ColecoVision game, but it's brand new. It's the game's dream. So pretty much his generic answer. Uh, and regretting a purchase, I kind of said it already, but it was when I was younger and would trade my games into game stores and trade in like everything I had to get one thing. I think it'd be easier to trade with your friends. I know I had a friend who would have swapped all his Super Nintendo games and Super Nintendo for my Sega, even if for a week. So don't go to GameStop or whatever. <laughs> if there was to be a guy on this table that had a really old console, it's not going to be me. <laughs> you have old stuff, you got like a 5200, all this stuff you got off of for your bike. Yeah, yeah, I have that, but I thought Atari's don't count. <laughs> 5200's are rare, that counts. Um, but Chris actually has that now anyway. Chris on the Atari. Chris, Chris, took it, Chris took all my Atari stuff. No, I was going to say, I was actually born with the NES pretty much, so I grew up with that, so NES is my oldest console. And I don't really regret buying anything because I'm really, really stingy, and I don't spend more than about 10 bucks on a game. So it's hard to regret anything when you do it that way. How much was that Zelda again that you bought from Scott? 15. 15. Oh, okay. <laughs> You guys, you guys know what I mean, all right? I'm from Australia. Where the essay is backwards. Do we have time for like one more question? If anyone has one, Gilly. Oh wait, no. Uh, uh, well, two more questions. We'll do. We'll do. Beanie Man. Handheld. Favorite handheld. Favorite handheld. That's System it. or game? System. Turbo Graphics Express for sure. That's cheating. Yeah. Maybe. It's, it's a handheld. That's a handheld. Yeah. Okay. Uh, besides a handheld, I can play. Um, Probably like Game Boy Advance SP or something. Yeah, like that. that's the same. That could play so many, you know, of the previous releases. I guess DS Lite because it plays all the previous releases plus DS games. Except for Game Boy Advance. You can file it down and force the cartridge <laughs> in there. <laughs> Katie, what's your favorite handle? DS. DS Lite. And then one last question from our. So in Australia, yeah, do you. you well, that's we encounter a lot of European or Japanese consoles or games, and so like obviously you know you don't just get American games. Is it more of a world flavor? We actually don't get really anything American. Um, the the Japanese stuff. If you go to <laughs> if you go to game stores because it's so cheap to import from like Europe and, yeah. and London and all that you'll find a lot of like Famicoms and that kind of stuff at those places but you don't just like come across them in the wild or anything like that but they are very common to come across we have like a big I haven't seen one here yet do you have like a big chain of retro game stores like GameStop but like for retro play and trade okay we have we have game traders and yeah you'll see that stuff littered all through we're from all different regions and there's normally like one little American section with nothing in it but yeah for European there's a lot because it's so cheap. Like UK's games, well, I import from UK sometimes because it's so much cheaper. I got all the Resident Evils on GameCube for like $5. Wow. All right, I want to thank you all for coming and great time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for keeping the dingo questions to a minimum. <laughs> I'm actually mad that you kept them to a minimum, but. Did the dingoes steal your baby? <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to say. Thanks, seriously. Uh, thank you all. Grimsy 42's channel, Grimsy 42, beat em ups, wood, BDS, JHMDS. Video game, so. And then don't answer any questions. Thank you very much. Oh, no problem. What do you mean, kind of? Let's. Someone was mentioning this. Without yeah. What I'm doing is the way to like 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 the